Hey, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. We got a great Ask a Ninja question about the hole that is in the foundation wall. Whenever they uh, put in your HVAC unit back in the day, they, they busted out this big hole or they, they created a, a, an area for your heating and air ducts, your supply and your return duct work to go from the outside. If you've got a, a, if you've got a package unit on the outside of the crawl space, these HVAC ducts go through the foundation wall into the crawl space and we got a DIYer wanting to know what to do about that big gap that seems to be a critter intrusion problem. Stay tuned. Okay, so before I get into uh, the question uh, from uh, Josh about the, uh, the duck work, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the Ask a Ninja program. Uh, you know, not everybody knows how to, uh, to ask a ninja, basically, so I thought I'd show you right here on our website when you go to crawlspaceninja.com. You go up here to the About section, and you scroll down to Ask a Ninja. You don't click on anything. You just hold your uh, mouse over it and you scroll down to Ask a Ninja. And then this uh, pulls up this area here. It uh, asks for name, phone number, email, different things like that, your address. And then it also gives you the ability to upload some photos uh, like Josh did in this scenario. So anyway, uh, you can ask up to three questions. Now, if for some reason you're asking a question that maybe we've already answered, a lot of times what will happen is either our DIY specialist or one of our ninjas will uh, reply to your question and then send you a video link answering the question for you. So not all questions get answered. Obviously, we get a lot of these questions, but if, if we can, we'll try to answer them. And then we've also had a lot of questions that we just couldn't answer. They were um, <clears throat> just out of our, our scope of answering. Like uh, one gentleman wanted to know, uh, if he could ventilate uh, dry air from his attic down to his crawl space and some other things like that. And, and I, I think it's a great idea, but that's not something we uh, would be comfortable answering or even trying uh, at this point. So uh, anyway, let's get into this question. So uh, basically, like I said, this is a question from Josh. This is the photo that he sent us. And what he's wanting to know is this gap right here. You can actually see... Uh, the outside light and then also into his HVAC unit and I've done a few videos about uh, what we call critter intrusion points and certainly the HVAC system is one of those huge critter intrusion points. Um, you've got to make sure that you cut this off either from the outside or the inside but I would certainly recommend both. Um, you might want to, now this could be caulked and it could just uh, show uh, light through it, but you want to make sure that where metals meeting metal that you uh, caulk these up really good and a lot of times the HVAC Company will put the unit on a riser. Okay uh, Maybe a couple of risers that they have and then um, You got to pay attention to that because if something can squeeze underneath the unit once it gets underneath there They're normally not sealed from below so they can get up into the unit and then get access into the into your crawl space that way as well. So if you find that your unit is on some kind of risers, maybe it's sitting on a concrete pad and it's on a riser, make sure that you put some mesh, some mesh uh, screening. Uh, copper, for example, is really good. Uh, from what I understand, rodents don't like to try to uh, chew through that. Um, but you want to try to stop this as best as you can. So his question was, I'm encapsulating my crawl space, and in the picture there are two 14-inch HVAC lines. There's one here and one here. It's the supply and the return. Uh, should I fill this area in with pressure-treated wood first and then put up the wall liner, or just put up the wall liner and uh, seal it with tape? Now, um, you can certainly use pressure-treated wood, Josh. That's, that's, that's okay. It's just a little bit more difficult to work with. We like using our uh, two and a quarter inch uh, termite-resistant foam board. Uh, to seal this area. It's not, um, how do I say this? It could still be chewed, but you know what? Wood could still be chewed. So, it, but it's more of a deterrent, okay? Uh, truly, probably the best thing, if you could do it, would be to get a, a mason or uh, uh, someone that, that's good at masonry and uh, uh, fill this in 
and uh, seal this up with concrete or something like that. But that, this is a pretty tight area to work in. So we typically just cut foam board uh, and use a combination of foam board and spray foam around this area and then put our plastic up. And I'm gonna show you right here what that looks like. So these are, uh, this is a project we had done, as you can see, a little cleaner cut than yours, Josh, but uh, still the same thing. They put this header across right here and then this, weird duct this thing is not moving a lot of good air so we, we we wound up putting foam board in and then straightening the duct work so that it's better airflow and as you can see the foam board is raised up off the wall all the way down and then we taped and sealed around the duct work itself so if you've got any kind of intrusion points like that uh, either foam board or a combination of mesh, metal. You could use uh, sheet metal if you wanted, if you're really good at sheet metal. Uh, obviously, wood is good if you're good at cutting uh, uh, circular things around. Uh, but for us, foam board is just the easiest way to do it. So my name is Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja. And uh, what did you use to seal up your HVAC openings and uh, or did you use anything at all or did you just put plastic over it so that's our that's today's uh, question for you be sure to subscribe to our channel answer the question what did you use to seal up that hvac uh opening there and i hope you make it a happy and blessed day and we'll see you later